Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of my new Football Manager 2020 series. It's going to be with Arsenal. Arsenal, of course, as you can see, they are the team that I go for. So I feel like it's pretty fitting for me to, to get back in to FM20 with the team that I pretty much want to play with the most. I haven't actually played with Arsenal on FM20 this year, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And obviously, in real life currently... We're not in a, in a very good way. We're in a pretty bad position. So let me go through a few things here. We have gone all the way through pre-season. Uh, obviously, a lot of the transfer activity was already done um, up until uh, this point here. We only made one actual signing, and that was Xavi Quintilla. And he was signed from, I think, Villarreal. Yeah. So Villarreal, uh, we paid his 9.5 million pound release clause um, and he's coming he's a left back that can also play center back if needed uh, we do play with ball playing defenders so I feel like that's kind of it's almost perfect because he's a little bit of extra cover he's also only 22 years old so he's probably going to improve a little bit more as well as you can see 20 determination good teamwork good work rate relatively good pace uh, lacking a little bit in jumping and strength but I think overall He's going to be quite a, a beneficial left back to have. And of course, we, we do start the game with both uh, Bellerin and Tierney currently out with injuries. And I think Bellerin, I think his injury is for, I think when it started, we started the game up. It was for three, three to four months. So he's going to be out for quite some time. Now, in regards to the players we let go, uh, first of all, we only let one player or one first team player go. And that was uh, Socrates, or Socrates, however you want to say it. And uh, yeah, he was sold to Leicester. I feel like it's it's kind of a bad move to be selling him to Leicester, but no one else really wanted him. So I felt like it was kind of the only choice we had to make. As you can see, we made a profit on him anyway. We sold him for about 20 million. And I think there was some other clauses thrown in there as well. So yeah, as you can see, potentially going up to 25 million. I think it was like 50 appearances or something like that. Um, and again, like I said, we're playing with ball playing defenders. He's not a ball playing defender, so it makes sense to, to essentially just get him out of the club, uh, especially with his age at 31. He's definitely not getting any younger. Anyway, the next thing we want to go over is our preseason. As you can see, we did really, really well. Uh, we've got some impressive victories in here as well over Real Madrid and Sporting. Uh, but we started off with a 1-0 victory against Portsmouth. We then beat Sheffield, uh, Sheffield Wednesday, sorry, 3-0. QPR, we beat them 2-0. Uh, we beat Olympiacos 5-0. Uh, we then went into this friendly cup, which I assume is essentially the Emirates Cup. Uh, for Milikau, we beat them 2-0 in the semi-final. Went into the final, and we managed to beat Real Madrid 2-1. Uh, as you can see, Saka getting on the score sheet there as well. And then finally, our last friendly, like I said, a pretty impressive 3-0 victory against Sporting. Uh, so today's episode, we're going to be doing both of these games, Everton and Brighton. Everton at home in our first league game. Um, so let's actually get straight into that. I'm kind of looking forward to what I think this is going to be the team that we put out today. Uh, we're going to start with Lacazette on the bench. I really want to try and play Aubameyang uh, as our striker as much as possible. Um, and I feel like Martinelli, he, you know, he's only 18. He needs some game time if he's actually going to develop. So we've got Martinelli. We've got Reese Nelson as well on the bench, who I think is probably a little bit better. But I feel like I want to at least give Martinelli a little bit of game time. Actually, I might. I've changed my mind already. Let's let's go with Reese Nelson. He, he, he's he's already classed as a wonder kid, so I feel like it will be more beneficial. Um, I also want to get. Kolasinac on the bench here as well. Probably probably for Chambers. Yeah, and we'll keep Pablo Mari over there as well. Uh, it's pretty good that we've got ch uh, like Chambers and Maitland-Niles can both play right back, but I think we're going to start with Cedric. Um, he is currently on loan. And uh, I think in real life, Arsenal are probably going to try and sign him on a free transfer. Uh, once his contract does run out. So we might even try and do that ourselves. Possibly. Um, we'll have to wait and see how he performs throughout the season. Um, we're also going to give a debut here to Quintella. For today's game as well. 
And of course, Leno will be our goalkeeper. Uh, he did pick up an injury during preseason, but it wasn't too serious. And of course, we're going to stick with Mustafi and David Luiz as our two center halves. Our midfield pairing, it's a little bit interesting. I'm going to go with Shaka as a Mazala, Pereira as a Regista, and then Guendozi in his more preferred role as a box-to-box -box midfielder. Of course, Pepe is going to be an inside forward. And then we're going to use a Aubameyang. I mean, we're using him as a deep-lying forward. I, I am possibly going to change that depending on how many goals he starts to score. You know, if there's a lack of goals, we, we can definitely change it. I feel like Lacazette does kind of fit that deep lying forward a little bit more, as you can see. He's just the stats seem to be in the right places for him, whereas Aubameyang, it's a, a little bit different. If we go down there, as you can see, lacking a little bit of balance, lacking a little bit of passing there as well, um, but everything else, obviously, the the pace is great. Okay, uh, the bench today we're going to go with Martinez, Mari, Klasenac, Maitland Niles, Sabios, Martinelli, and Lacazette. Uh, I'll give a squad number there to Quintilla. And uh, I'm really looking forward to this first game. Uh, former Arsenal player in a Wobi. Of course, we uh, sold him to Everton last season. Um, but yeah, I mean, Everton are a good side. Calvert-Lewin up top, Richarlison, Bernard, the, the two Brazilians on either wing. And uh, yeah, I mean, Sigurdsson can always bang in a free kick as well. I'm looking forward to this. I'm, I'm happy I'm starting this series. I've, I've really, like, missed playing football manager a little bit. Been, you know, trying to diversify the content on my channel recently. Been playing games like Transport Fever 2. Obviously, TEW 2020 as well. Um, but that's kind of more of a staple of my channel at the moment. And uh, I just wanted to bring football manager back. Like, it's the one game that I essentially made my YouTube channel for. Um, and I was pretty successful at it. You know, maybe four, four or five years ago. Um, even when 2020 came out this year, I had a, a decent following. So hopefully some of you guys are coming back and you're going to enjoy this Arsenal series. All right, we've got Pepe breaking forward. He's, he's lacking a little bit of match fitness. He he was actually on holiday for, for most of preseason, uh, which was good, but it was also bad as he's, like I said, not exactly match fit. Uh, but it did give a chance for our younger guys, like Reese Nelson here, who's breaking forward. He um, had a good opportunity. I mean, he didn't really do much there. A little bit frustrating. But yeah, between him and Martinelli, they, they got a lot of game time. Saka in there as well. All right. I mean, I have to say, a lot of the Everton players aren't match fit either. I mean, pretty much their whole team isn't match fit. Whereas most of our team is. Anyway, Richarlison. Ooh, that's a good save by Leno. Basically palmed it off onto the post. I mean, this is an important game. I know it's only the first game of the season, but like I said, Everton are probably going to be like a top seven side, I would say. Maybe top eight. And if we want to try and push into the Champions League, which is kind of... I don't want to say it's my goal this season, and I think we've get yeah, I think we should be given a penalty here. Yep, we get yeah, we got a penalty. Should be Aubameyang. Maybe not. It's Pepe. Okay, I'm pretty sure I did change that, and I kind of wish it was Aubameyang taking the penalty, as Pepe has just missed. Oh man, what a what a great opportunity to go one nil ahead. And we're only, what, 25 minutes in as well. Nicola Pepe needs to be... I mean, he's, we paid $72 million for him. Well, at least the game did. Anyway, we've got Nelson breaking forward, beats two men. And Aubameyang gets the rebound, puts it in the back of the net. And there we go. That's his first goal. So maybe I will keep him as a deep-lying forward. Uh, but like I said, we'll just have to wait and see. We are dominating at the moment, which is good. In, you know, we are the home team as well, so it kind of makes sense, but. I mean, obviously, Arsenal's biggest problem is the defense. Um, hence why I tried to, to sign someone. We really didn't have a lot of money. Uh, obviously, selling Socrates made made a little bit of money for us to, to go out and spend. I think we've probably got about 
maybe another 9 million or something to spend. Nothing too serious. I think I might just save it. I don't really... I don't really think we need anybody. We've got a lot of good youngsters that I want to try and implement throughout the season into the side. Really give them an opportunity. Oh, and Aubameyang. Oh, he's hit the crossbar. So unlucky. Uh, we might actually take Pepe off. He's on a 5.9. Yeah, we might, uh, we might take him off. He's not doing too well. This is actually his debut as well. Obviously, he was only signed in this season. Uh, not exactly a very good first game. So let's take him off. We'll bring Martinelli on. And I guess he can just kind of play on that right. We Actually, we'll swap him around. We'll swap Reese Nelson and Martinelli. And uh, I don't think we really need to... Maybe Gwendozi. The Maitland Niles. Let's, uh, let's wait a few more minutes. Let's wait maybe like five or so. See what happens with this highlight first. So Cedric to Aubameyang. Back to Cedric. Alright, Terreira switching the play, but he's given the ball away. That's a disappointing ball. Mustafi doing relatively well. He's been dragged out of position though. Oh, Martinelli. Nice win. Could be on a counter-attack as well. Can he play it? He does. Plays it through the middle to Aubameyang. And uh, he can't, unfortunately, do anything with it there. Uh, Martinelli's in behind again, though. Can't get a cross in. Quintilla. Does get a cross in. And that's a, that's a goal. I thought that was a good save by Pickford. But Aubameyang has snuck in a header there. Which I really wasn't expecting. Anyway, let's, uh, let's make that sub. So Maitland-Niles on for Guindosi. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, really unexpected. I just was not expecting him to score a header there. You would think that the centre-back would have that all day long. And like I said, Pickford got a hand to it, so I thought he was going to make a decent save. But it still managed to go in the back of the net. And Aubameyang's coming forward once again. Torreira blasts it. And Aubameyang, can he get his hat-trick? And he does. We've got to get him on a new contract. Just like we need to do in real life. Patrick in his first Premier League game of the season. Well, our first Premier League game of the season as well. Let's, uh, let's take him off. We'll bring Lacazette on. Just to round off the game. Patrick Hero. Perfect way to start the series as well. I, like I said, I was kind of expecting Everton to be a little bit more difficult. Than they have been so far today. Ooh, Cedric blasts one, but it goes over the bar. This is a really good first game. I'm pleasantly surprised. There we go, the 3-0 victory. Uh, the Pepe missed penalty, but Aubameyang with a hat-trick. Great stuff. And then, of course, up next. Arsenal, of course, losing to Brighton in real life just the other day. A little bit scary. Anyway, what I'll do now is I'll skip forward the seven days and I'll join you back for the Brighton game. Alright, so... Let's get into the lineup. I think we're just going to go with the exact same team. Obviously, Pepe really didn't perform very well in the last game. I was kind of thinking we might want to leave him out for this one. But, you know, I want to keep faith. I have to try and keep faith. He's a great player. Just looking at him. Like, he's... He's very, very good. He does fit the kind of inside forward, forward role. Probably more of an attacking mentality on it, but I think I, I like the support. Everyone's on support in the midfield, and I feel like they're all looking to, to sort of help each other out, or at least that's kind of the, the mindset of this tactic that I'm using. So, yeah, let's just go with the same exact same team. We've got Martinelli, we've got Lacazette on the bench if we really need them. And uh, like I said, we really want to be trying to beat Brighton. I want to get a bit of revenge from what happened in real life just the other day. The 95th minute winner that was scored against Arsenal. And I know, I know we're away from home in this one, but I feel like we could definitely, definitely beat them. Hopefully our away form is not going to be like what it is in real life at the moment as well. 
All right, so we've got a highlight here. We've got Nelson on the ball. Back to Quintilla. Not a massive fan of us playing around with it at the back, even though I do have ball playing defenders. Always just get so nervous when they mess around with it. Anyway, Pepe with another decent shot. Just goes wide. Um, but I feel like he already looks a little bit better than he did last game. I don't even think we had a, a highlight where he essentially got involved in the game. So I'm actually pleasantly surprised that he's actually taken on some shots. Although Trossard is in behind here for Brighton. Uh, but there, that's well defended. That's well defended. Cedric getting a nice block in there. And it does go out for a corner. David Luiz gets it clear. Bormiang could start a counter-attack. I mean, he doesn't even really need anyone else. He's got the pace to essentially just go himself. And the ball goes all the way back to Australian goalkeeper, Matty Ryan. He's our national team goalkeeper. And he's very good. Probably deserves... I don't want to put any, like, disrespect on Brighton, but... I feel like he would easily fit into pretty much any other Premier League team as well. Alright, so Dunk. I mean, Dunk is actually a defender I might even look at possibly signing for our team in the future. Because he's a very, very impressive centre-back. You know, he's English as well. So that would be pretty fitting. Although we do have Holding and we do have Chambers, so... Not 100% sure if we actually need him, as I would like to get those guys playing more often. Anyway, Aubameyang in behind, running the whole length of the pitch by himself, essentially. And then we've got Cedric now. Can he get a cross in? Lays it back to Torreira. He puts an interesting ball over to Nelson. Back to Quintilla. Interesting cross. And there we go, Pepe. Finally getting his goal. Um, like I said, he's been pretty... He looked like he wanted to play today. That's probably the best way of putting it. He looked like he wanted to play and wanted to, to at least try and score a goal. And he's done that within the first 30 minutes of the game. So I'm happy. You got Quintilla again. Aubameyang, 2-0. Just like that. We've definitely been dominating. And now both of our, you know, two... Attacking forces, being Pepe and Aubameyang, have both got themselves on the score sheet. Be nice to see Nelson get on there as well. I think uh, Quintilla has both both assists so far. Oh, that's another good save, I think. There, I'm not sure if it hit the post or if it was a save by Burn Leno. And yeah, as you can see, Quintilla both assists to his name. Really happy with that signing, man. I thought that was a... When I, I saw that it was available for 9.5 million with his release clause, I thought it was almost too good to be true. Oh, oh, Nelson hits the crossbar. So unlucky. That would have been all three of our, you know, front attacking players. Our, our three forwards, if we'll call them that. I feel like the attacking wingers are essentially like forwards as well. Especially when you play them as an inside forward and an inverted winger. They obviously get involved a lot more within the goal. Alright, we might look to make a couple of subs here. We are 2-0 up, so we're, we're definitely in a good position. Like I said, probably want to get Martinelli on. Not really too sure who else. We've got Cedric. I mean, he's looking for a goal himself. Of course, he tried to bang one in. Towards the end of the last game as well. Alright, let's make a sub here. Let's go Martinelli on for Reese Nelson. And uh, do I want to bring Lacazette on? I mean, I kind of do want to bring him on. Should probably take David Luiz off. He's on a yellow card. I mean, Gwendozi. Let's go Gwendozi again. I mean, we might actually give a start to Maitland Niles. Wendozi's had two pretty bad games. I think he had a six point. Oh, Nelson scores. There we go. All three of our starting forwards have got on the score sheet, and he's just about to come off. Perfect. 
And he only just sort of snuck that goal in there. Only just. And uh, that was his departing gift for the team. All right, seeing as we're 3-0 up, let's get Mari on for David Luiz. No point in, like, risking him picking up his second yellow. And it uh, looks like we might have another 3-0 victory. I mean, we have... We obviously have time to either concede or to score another goal. I have to say, at the moment, it looks like we might score another one. We're coming forward. Although we're, we were sort of being driven back a little bit. We've got a bit of space on the right-hand side. Pepe. Oh, penalty by Dunk. Or was it just outside? Yeah, just outside the box. Okay. Pepe's going to take it. And it's cleared away there. Unfortunately for Murray, he just doesn't really have too much pace. That wasn't a... Wasn't a very good counter-attack. Although, you know, they're, they're still in possession. They could get something forward. Ooh, just wide by the Brighton player, Gross. And, uh... I mean, they've, they've had eight shots. They've only had the one on target, so... They really haven't threatened us all that much. And there we go. The perfect start to the new series. Back-to-back -back victories. And, uh, yeah, we actually go top of the Premier League. And, of course, Mari making his debut. And Quintilla with, uh, with two assists there. Man of the match performance as well. And, uh, yeah, some clubs already want to loan him. Uh, but there we go. We've got two 3-0 victories to start off our season. Um, our first real big game is Manchester United away. So I'll probably join you guys back for that Man United game for the next episode. Um, and we'll also have an EFL Cup third round. Which, depending on the opponent, I'll probably play uh, a lot of our younger guys. A lot of our backups. Uh, guys like Saka. Guys like... We go down here. We've got Willock as well. Uh, as you can see, I've been trying to get Mesut Ozil out of the club. Also got Eddie and Ketia. So those three guys will probably make an appearance. Um, and of course, we'll probably give Maitland-Niles a game. Martinelli a game. And uh, yeah, probably guys like Chambers as well. For that EFL Cup game. But yeah, I'll join you back for Man United in the next episode. And hopefully you guys are enjoying this one. And you will enjoy it going forward in the future as well. You can smash the like button, be much appreciated, guys. And of course, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're a new viewer. And uh, yeah, turn the notification bell on as well. Only 8.5% of my subscribers have that bell on. And it's very important for you guys. And it also helps me out as well. Apart from that, guys, as always, take it easy and goodbye.